I was watching Teaching Tech recently, and Michael did a comparison between FreeCAD, the new ONSO version of FreeCAD, and commercial CAD programs. He had a few criticisms of both ONSO and the vanilla FreeCAD. Some of those were absolutely right on the money, and others seemed more based on being unfamiliar with FreeCAD. Here I'm going to work up the two examples he did showing how someone with more experience with FreeCAD would approach it. The first example was a bar with a step and three holes in it, filleted on the top. I'll be doing this design in the part workbench mostly because I personally prefer it. Really, this should work about the same in part design. I'll start with a sketch on the XY plane. The first difference is that I'm going to use the centered rectangle rather than the plane rectangle. I'll center it on the origin. When sketching in FreeCAD, it's almost always the best practice to enter your design on the origin and use attachment to put the origin of the sketch where you need it in the overall design. A big reason for this is that the origin and the axis lines make convenient reference points for constraints you'll have to use later. Set horizontal and vertical constraints on the rectangle. This is slightly less convenient than some of the other CAD packages, where you just tell it you want to constrain and it infers the type. I believe that feature is in planning, but it's not available in the mainstream free CAD right now, so fair enough. Instead of using construction geometry here, I could just build based on the x-axis, but I'm going to use a construction line just for the purposes of demonstration. There's more than one way to get the construction line going through the midline of the rectangle, but I'm going to do it by constraining the origin to pass through the construction line. Now we need three holes. One of them is in the center, so I'll attach the circle to the origin. The other two are on the midline on either side of the circle, so attach them to the construction line. The two holes to the side need to be centered within their half of the rectangle so that we can get three evenly spaced holes. Michael ran into what he believed was a lack of a midpoint constraint several times, but in fact it exists but has to be specifically requested rather than being inferred. I think there might be work to implement that inference as well, but don't quote me on it because I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly. Select the points to either side, then the center of the circle, and add a symmetry constraint. We want the two holes to the sides to be the same size. Select both circles and the equals constraint, which in this case refers to their radii. The center hole has a different size, so leave it unconstrained for now. Now close the sketch and extrude it to the default 10 millimeters. Now for the stair step off to one side. Select the face it should be connected on and click New Sketch. Confirm the plane face attachment. For things like this, constraining to external geometries is the key to a fully parametric design. So first bring in the sides of the part as external geometry. There's nothing to center a rectangle on here, so switch to the rectangle specified as two corners. Place the first corner constrained onto the external geometry to the left, and constrain the second corner to the point at the bottom along the x-axis. Now use the symmetry constraint to constrain the top of the new rectangle to the midline of the existing rectangle. Note that the sketch is turned green indicating that it is fully constrained, meaning no part of the geometry can move without deleting a constraint. Close that sketch and extrude it 5 mm. There's our stair step. The final step is to ease the edges, so select all of the edges and also the tops of the holes and use the fillet tool. Let's take the default of 1 millimeter for the size of the fillet. Another of Michael's criticisms is that FreeCAD doesn't have a proper timeline. In fact, it does have a timeline. It's just that in the case of FreeCAD, it takes the form of a hierarchy of folder operations that contained the pieces the operation was performed on. So if I open the fillet and open the extrude, we find the sketch that formed the basis of the shape. To demonstrate that it is a fully parametric design, I'll change the width of the rectangle. The symmetry constraints have caused the holes to remain in their proper relative positions. 
Because the stair step was built based on constraining to the external geometry, it is also expanded in width to match. Thus to belabor the point, really stretch the rectangle to 100 millimeters. Now that there's room for a larger fillet, make it 1.5 millimeters. Easily enough done. This is very definitely a parametric design. On to the next design. Michael's first observation in this one was that FreeCAD does not allow you to select portions of a sketch for extrusion. It's all or nothing. He's quite right. I agree that's a feature that would be very handy. I'm pretty sure I've seen something like that being available in the Link Stage 3 branch, but as far as I know, it's not slated to appear in the mainstream. It's a fair criticism. Again, start with the sketch on the XY plane. Just create a circle centered on the origin and set a radius of 25 millimeters. Create a smaller circle for the hole attached to the x-axis. Now we want that circle centered on its half of the larger circle, but there isn't a reference point for symmetry. Just drop a point attached to the circle. Now select that point and attach it to the x-axis. Points are by default reference geometry, so there's no need to set that. Now just apply a symmetry constraint to the center of the smaller circle to fix it into place and close the sketch. Extrude it to 5 millimeters. Now for the half cylinder. Select the top of the cylinder and create a new sketch. As usual, accept the suggestion of plain face as the attachment mode. Once again, a key to proper parametric design is to constrain the new sketch to the external geometry that already exists. So bring in both circles as external geometry. Now attach a circle to the center of the hole and pull it out well larger than wanted just to make things easier. Select the external geometry circle and the new circle and constrain them to be of equal radius. Note that the new circle turns green as it is now fully constrained. Now we need a surrounding half circle so select the arc tool. Attach the center of the arc to the origin. Once again, draw it in large and constrain it to the correct size. Attach the start of the arc above the origin on the y-axis. Bring it around and attach the other side to the y-axis underneath the origin. Select the larger external circle and the arc and apply the equals constraint for equal radius. The arc turns green as it is fully constrained. Finally, just drop a line from the top to the bottom of the arc to close the shape, and then close the sketch. Extrude the sketch 5 millimeters as well. Unlike the part design workbench where it assumes that we're working with a single body, if we want these two pieces to be part of a single whole, we must select both of them and then click on the Union tool to make them one piece. We can see the line where the two pieces meet is still visible. But click on the fusion and in the data pane set refine to true and the line goes away making it clear that this is truly one shape. Oops, I think my mouse battery may be getting weak, but I can just click on the center focus button to bring the model back into view. Now to apply the fillet. Select the line we want the fillet on. Zoom in a good bit to make it easier. In order to get the slope we're looking for, we need the size of the fillet to be the same as the height of the second extrude. But there's a tricky bit here that I must admit is quite unintuitive. Fillets in FreeCAD sometimes freak out when they go exactly to the edge of a shape. The workaround is instead of selecting 5mm, set it to 4.9999mm. A tenth of a micron is way smaller than the resolution of any 3D printer and all but the most fantastically expensive at CNC machines. It is meaningless other than avoiding the corner case with the geometry engine. I think I'd like that hole to be a little larger. I'll start opening up these folders, digging back into the history of the object, and reopen the original sketch that started it all. Just pull the circle a little larger and close it again. When Michael did that, the size of the hole in the top section did not reflect the change. Mine does because I constrained the circle in the second sketch to be the same size using external geometry. 
As he did, I'll select the model and mirror it. Now to drill a well in the top of the shape. This is the part workbench, so we do it just a little bit differently than part design. Attach another sketch to the top of the shape. Draw a circle for the well. Instead of pocketing, extrude it to negative 2.5 millimeters so that it goes into the object. Now select the shape and then the new extrusion and perform a Boolean cut. That's our well. As Michael noted, because that well has been applied to the shape after the mirroring, it is not reflected in the mirror. Sometimes that might even be the desirable thing. In this case, it would be easy to just delete the mirror and redo it. But what if we were already a dozen steps past that with everything dependent on the mirror? This is a solvable problem, though the solution isn't terribly intuitive or obvious without more in-depth knowledge of FreeCAD. Most operations in FreeCAD include a parameter in the data pane for the base shape that the operation was applied to, and where applicable, the tool that was applied to it. The mirror is no exception. If I select the mirror and come down in the data pane to source, you can see that the source is the fillet, not the cut that was performed on it later. But if I select that parameter and click the three dots to the right, I get a dialog box letting me select the sh source shape for the mirror operation. This means I can change it from the fillet to the cut. Now the well is reflected in the mirror as we wanted. FreeCAD definitely allows you to rewrite history even though it's not always a GUI operation. Michael's final criticism was the topological naming problem. Unfortunately, that one is dead on. It's a hard problem and no known CAD package is completely free of it. Short of an artificial intelligence sufficiently advanced to actually understand the intent of your design, no CAD package can be expected to perfectly handle the problem. But FreeCAD handles it especially poorly. Right now, even in cases where the right thing is unambiguous and clear, a FreeCAD model can potentially break. The good news is that mitigating the problem is a primary focus of the current development cycle and we can expect big improvements in the next stable release. But that, of course, is not today. Personally, in spite of the flaws and some awkwardness in the interfaces, I still find that FreeCAD is the right choice for me. Its license means that my work can never be held hostage for more money than I would care to pay, or locked away forever because somebody in management decides that I am not sufficiently profitable for them. It's always worth keeping in mind that in the modern corporate world, the reasonable management that you're sure would never do you wrong can easily be out the door tomorrow. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.